My name is Rick Pildes. I'm a professor of law at NYU School of Law, and I teach and write about what I call the law of democracy. So the law of democracy is partly about the U.S. Supreme Court and the way it oversees the American democratic system. Um, and you might ask, well, why should the United States Supreme Court oversee the American democratic system? And for a long time in American history, the Supreme Court actually did not do very much uh, to police the way the democratic system in the United States was structured. But over time, uh, the Supreme Court learned uh, uh, something that is true about all democracies, which is uh, that in every democratic system, there's a risk that those who temporarily have power because they control the legislature, the political process, um, that those people will use that power to try to change the rules of democracy or manipulate the rules of democracy to make it much more difficult for their power to be challenged, to make themselves less politically accountable, uh, to try to create barriers to their opponents to being able to challenge them effectively. And the United States Supreme Court eventually came to recognize that there's an important role for courts to play under the U.S. Constitution in trying to guard against those kinds of risks to the democratic system. So for example, this is where the well-known one vote, one person doctrine came from in constitutional law. The one vote, one person doctrine says that when election districts are drawn, the districts have to have roughly equal numbers of people in them. And the reason that that became a matter of constitutional law is that for many decades in the United States, in the 20th century in particular, um, legislatures simply would not redraw election districts uh, and wouldn't uh, require the districts to have roughly equal numbers of people. Uh, in fact, uh, districts sometimes had 50 times the number of people in one district, let's say in a city, as was true in a rural area. Uh, and the Supreme Court came to recognize that this was fundamentally unfair as a matter of basic constitutional principle, as a matter of fair political equality, um, and that this problem wasn't going to get fixed by the legislatures who, after all, benefited from the current system. And so the Supreme Court developed, as a matter of constitutional doctrine, the requirement of what's known as one vote, one person, or roughly equal number of people in election districts. So when you go to vote for Congress, your district for Congress has roughly the same number of people as every other district in your state. You're not any worse off or better off than anyone else in your state. And that's considered a matter of basic political equality and political fairness. The Supreme Court then went from matters like that to very dramatic oversights of the political process or interventions in the political process. And maybe the most famous in modern American history is the resolution of the disputed election in 2000 uh, between George W. Bush and Al Gore, uh, where you may remember the outcome in the election turned on what turned out to be 533 votes in the state of Florida. Uh, and there was a lot of conflict and controversy about uh, how to count certain ballots and what was fair and what the legal rules were. And ultimately, these issues went to the United States Supreme Court. The Supreme Court made a decision about how the process of resolving that election dispute should be handled. Uh, and one of the remarkable features of the U.S. Supreme Court in American political life at this point in our history is that once the court made that decision, uh, everybody in the system basically complied with it, even though the losers in the process, those who supported Al Gore for president, uh, were, of course, incredibly disappointed, even angry about the court decision. Uh, but nonetheless, they believed uh, that it was more important to comply with the court decision to respect the rule of law. Um, over time and, and in the present era, the Supreme Court's been asked to get involved in resolving more and more disputed issues about how American democracy is structured, whether it's structured in a way that is consistent with principles of political fairness, political equality, um, consistent with various First Amendment rights. Uh, and one of the areas of greatest controversy these days is the process of what's called partisan gerrymandering, uh, in which uh, those who have the power to design election districts 
in each decade when they need to be redesigned after a new census, use that power to try to manipulate the way the districts are designed so that it's not the case of voters picking who they want to serve as their representatives, but the representatives essentially choose which voters they want to have by designing the election districts to give themselves the voters that they most like, that is, the voters they think are most likely to vote for them. Um, so this is a real problem in the design of American democracy. Uh, it is actually somewhat unique in the United States that we allow politicians to have the power to draw their own election districts. In most countries that use election districts, there are various kinds of independent commissions for this process. Uh, but since we do have self-interested or potentially self-interested political actors doing this in the United States, uh, the courts have been turned to by disappointed uh, citizens, plaintiffs, political parties, uh, and asked to oversee what's been done and uh, to overturn what's been done in contexts where the claim is uh, election districts have been manipulated in the way they're designed for partisan political purposes. This is a complex area for the court to get involved in. The court has struggled over the years with whether it ought to be involved in that. Uh, but we are right now in the middle of finding out from the Supreme Court whether in fact the court and American constitutional doctrine is going to impose serious constraints on partisan gerrymandering. Um, these are just some of the areas, disputed elections, how election districts are designed, whether voting rules are fair, um, how the campaign finance system works, uh, in which the United States Supreme Court and constitutional law now play a major role in deciding what are the basic ground rules of American democracy.